everybody, hope you're all having a great day. Um, today we're going to review the Benchmade Mini Freak. Um, this knife was sent to me by a subscriber and I would like to thank Jack for sending me this knife. I've actually um, EDC'd this knife um, every day at work since I received it. I put this knife through its paces over the last three weeks or so that I've had it. So I kind of wanted to carry this knife, you know, and use it quite a bit and <clears throat> so that I could give you all an honest review about how it cuts and slices and holds up. Um, so far, so good, but we'll get into what I've used this knife for um, here in a minute. So let's show you what comes in a box other than the knife. So it comes in this blue box like this, and it'll have the Mini Freak on the side and tell you the model number and stuff like that. It does have some tape on the side to keep it closed. And then when you open it, as a lot of Benchmades do, it comes with this little um, cloth case and then it'll have some material inside talking about the access lock and then some instructions for care. Inside the box has this little padding right here to, uh, to pad the knife in the box. So that's what you get in the box when you order this. A little bit about the knife. This is the Benchmade 565 Mini Freak. The blade length is three inches with a 2.875 uh, length cutting edge. I do like it when knife manufacturers use most of the blade or as much as they can to the cut for the cutting edge. I think that gives you the most out of your knife, especially with knives around three inch blades. Um, I think anytime you have a knife with a three inch blade or shorter, you should really try to use up most of that uh, blade for a cutting edge. And Benchmade did a good job on that. So uh, it does have the access lock right here. You just pull this back and the knife will shut and then you flip it right back. These are some of the smoothest knives once they break in that, in my opinion, you can get. Now, you know, Spyderco makes a smooth knife and stuff too, but these axis locks, they come right out. And uh, they shut fairly well once you get them broke in. This knife is getting broke in. It was a lot stiffer than this whenever I got it, but um, the more I use it, there it went, the, more, the better it breaks in. And you can see right there, um, it shuts pretty good. Uh, and like I said, the more I use it, the more it will break in and it will just get butter smooth over a period of time. And it, it's broke in quite a bit since, I, since I've actually owned it. Uh, the blade steel is a CPM S30V. I don't know if you can see that right there or not. I don't know if it'll focus. And it also is a first production run. Um, I think that's pretty cool. And it says it is number 23 of 1200 in the first production run. So it's actually a very low serial number. And then you can see the bench uh, made logo on this side. Even though it is a first production run, when Jack sent me this, he said he EDC'd his and he um, really enjoyed EDCing it. And he hoped I enjoyed mine as much as he does his. So being that it's a first production run did not affect what I knew I was gonna do with this knife. When Jack said he hoped I enjoyed it, I knew he wanted me to enjoy this knife. So I carry this knife. Um, I EDC this knife every day at work, like I said, and uh, that's what knives are made for. Some people collect them. I don't collect nothing really. I'm a user of everything I own. Uh, the, as you can see here, the clip does have some wear on it from, from carrying it every day for the last three or three weeks or so. And the clip is reversible. You can see right here, it has three holes on this side, which uh, matches the three screws on the clip. So it is only tip up carry, but you can either do that left or right handed. So it is user friendly for um, if you're left handed, which I'm right handed. So that's why it's configured like this. But if you're left handed, you can configure it to the other side and carry it like that as well. The handle material is a polymer. It does have a rubbery um, coating on it right here and it has a harder coating in the middle. If you do see right here, the clip is actually on the harder surface. So when you stick it in your pocket, you it minimi uh, minimalizes, minimizes the drag that you have from the knife because of the rubber coating. Um, that rubber coating does make this knife pretty, um, pretty comfortable in your hand. The um, handle length is 4.05 inches and you can see uh, my hand pretty much fills it up, but there is just enough hanging out the end that it does make this knife uh, very, very comfortable to hold in your hand. Uh, it does have a drop point uh, blade with a flat grind. Another thing that I like that Benchmade did, you can see these flats right here on the side. I do use a Wicked Edge sharpening system to sharpen my knives. And I do like it when they put a flat right here. It just makes it a whole lot easier for me to use my Wicked Edge when it does have a flat um, 
on the blade. Now this does feel like it does have a good 90 degree right here, so you could actually um, strike a fire steel with it if you needed to without using your blade. So uh, I do like it when knives have 90 degree spines on them so that I can strike a fair seam rod if need be. Um, the, like I said, the handle length is 4.05 inches, so just a little over four inches, I'm assuming this tip. And you can see here, it does have a lanyard hole. The weight of this knife is a whopping 2.57 ounces. It literally doesn't weigh hardly anything. And um, it is made in the United States. The, uh, the number one use for this knife that I would say, I would not call this a tactical knife by no means. Not saying you couldn't defend yourself with this knife, but um, a three inch blade is a little bit short for a tactical knife. It is more suited for EDC, especially with the weight, you can barely even tell it's in your pocket. And these rubber handles um, really make it grippy so you can really hold on to the knife. So as an EDC knife, um, this is a very good choice for an EDC knife. And that's what Jack said he did with his, and that's exactly what I do with this one. Now I've done several tasks um, with this knife from cutting open boxes, you know, just cutting the tape on it, opening packages, to actually cutting boxes down, cutting, cutting the cardboard and stuff like that, to the other day, <clears throat> I actually was putting airline up at work, a three eighths inch airline, and I cut a lot of airline with this knife. A ton of airline. This is actually the only thing I use to cut the airline with. So, uh, I put this knife through a lot of paces. Now I did clean up the blade before I did the review. It was very dirty. Um, you can see a few smudges on it and stuff like that. It was very dirty um, from where I used it cutting all those uh, airlines and stuff like that. So I did clean this up a little bit for you all for the review, um, but I couldn't clean up the pocket clip and stuff because it had scratches and stuff. So you can tell I do carry this knife daily and there is like some residue and stuff on it where I've had it in my pocket. But um, I will tell you, it did cut through that, um, that airline very, very easily because you can see it does have a thin blade profile. And as most of you probably know, the thinner the blade profile, the easier it is to cut and the better slicer it is. If you get a thick blade like some of the tactical blades are, they're not really good at, at what a knife is used for, which is slicing. They may be better suited for tactical use or really, really hard use, but... Um, I would say 95 to 99% of us, you know, don't use our knives in that way. And they're mainly used for EDC purposes like I've been using this one. So a slicer is actually um, a really good tool to have. And this is a very good slicer. As you can see here on the back, there is some jimping right here and some jimping on the blade. Um, I will say the way this blade curves up right here with the jimping, it does lock your thumb in very, very well. Along with the rubberized coating on this handle and you stick your thumb up there on that jimping, it does really, really lock it in. And as you can see the, uh, the chole right here for your finger to sit in, um, it really locks that, uh, that knife into your hand. Now, I don't know how sharp this knife is. Like I said, I used it a lot the other day. Um, the shave test, uh, it did get just a few hairs, but um, I, uh, I do need to sharpen it, I'd say. Um, let's try the paper test. I don't know how this is gonna go, so we're gonna find out, but I have used, remind you, I've used this knife a lot. Um, once you get in there, uh, once you hit that one spot right there, there must be like a little burr I get a little burr on my knives right here, especially when I carry them tip up and you can see there's a hole back here in the, in the back where it's a, a, through, a through knife, an open design right here at the bottom. And I've said this before, but I think my keys sometimes get in here and hit the blade because I carry my keys in the same uh, pocket as my knife. And I think my keys get through there and hit my blade or some change or something. And uh, that, I think that actually does cause some of it to actually uh, get a little nick on it sometimes. But once you get past that nick, you can see it does cut through it fairly well. But uh, I do need to touch this knife up. I just haven't had time to do it. I still carry it, and I used it today, and I had no issues uh, cutting the box I broke down today. I didn't cut, actually cut down tape. I actually cut the cardboard, um, and it, it cut right through it like there was no issue at all. Um, like I said, it's, it is still breaking in a little bit. Uh, it isn't, so, you know, it will close sometimes. 
but um, you really kind of got to flick it to get it to close, but it will close. And it's break, like I said before, it is breaking in nicely. It just needs some more, some more use and it could probably be cleaned if I, if I would guess. So I could probably um, break it down and clean it and that would probably help it some too because I've, I've carried this knife a lot. Um, so like I said, this is a great little EDC knife, especially if you're in an area where you can't carry a big knife. Um, they don't like us to carry big knives at work, so this really fit the bill for um, carrying this at work. You know, it's not gonna alarm anyone if I pull out this little knife versus if I pull out a four or five inch blade, somebody might be like, wait a minute, that's a weapon. But um, th this this has not raised any, any, any kind of awareness or anything to me with the blade length on it. Um, again, I would like to thank Jack for sending me this knife. I've really enjoyed it and I will continue to carry this knife um, daily to work. Um, that's where I get most of my most of my wear on my knives will come from work. So uh, the ones I carry on the weekend are mainly just backup blades. So the knives I carry to work are actually users and a lot of times hard users. So uh, I've really enjoyed carrying this knife. If you're looking for a good EDC knife, um, give the Benchmade uh, Mini uh, Freak a, a look. I think it's a very, very nice knife for, for that. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.